May I request the Honorable Vice President to kindly step front stage for the hood ceremony, please. A momentous occasion, the degree being conferred on the Vice President of Suriname. A big hand, a great honor for LPU also. Vice President is highly respected parliamentarian of long standing, an educationist, a social scientist, a renowned scholar of Vedic science, and above all, a very fine human being. I would read through his profile briefly. Born and brought up in Suriname, he has a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering and database from Suriname. And after his return from Netherlands in 2003, where he completed his master's degree in telecommunications at the Technical University of Delft, he started his career as a lecturer at the Anton de Kham University, Suriname. As an engineer and lecturer at the University of Suriname and the Polytechnic College from 2005 to 2013, he has been involved in many private public initiatives and in consulting as well. Due to his early interest in philosophy and esoteric studies, he has professionalized himself in both Western and Eastern philosophy apart from being a dedicated speaker on the Vedanta, Upanishads and esoteric studies. He has skilled himself in the practice of Arhatic Yoga and many hearing techniques and methods and is a certified past life therapist as well. He developed an interest in Sanskrit after being introduced to Hindi at a very young age by his mother. And it struck him profoundly that memorizing, visualizing, and thus thinking in Sanskrit turned out to be much easier compared to his native language Dutch and the local language Saranami, which of course is a mixture of Bhojpuri, Maithili, and Avdi. It might be very interesting for all of us to hear these things. The beauty hidden in Sanskrit and the metaphors and allegories of the Vedic scriptures, which provide deep insight in life's questions, made a deep impression on him. The knowledge and insights accumulated throughout the years awakened in him a sense of moral duty and urge to share these insights. More people need to know about the beauty and richness of the Vedic scriptures. That was his conviction. Although having obtained much through a broad scope of studies in Western and Eastern philosophy, the knowledge of Upanishads was far more striking and impressive to him, and he started sharing his insights in social, cultural, religious, and educational activities, including public speaking and workshops. Time and again, he demonstrated to the Suramese people the applicability of Vedic knowledge to everyday public life, its eternal and timelessness, and its capacity to contribute to policy making, even in a country at the national level. This is his drive, and combined with his views on nation building and the love for his country, this has become his passion. He is an advocate in promoting nation building, nationalism, and encouraging cultural diversity as a binding mechanism towards a collective Suriname's identity. There's more to it. As president of Vishwa Hindu Parishad Suriname from 2010 onwards till date, he initiated numerous cultural activities to help elevate Hindu traditions and culture. 
one of which was the construction of a giant diya in the context of Diwali, on the independent square to commemorate the annual festival of Deepavali, which now is a declared holiday, a national holiday in Suriname. From his teenage years till his early 30s, he was member of the Hindu Swam Sevak Sangh from 1998 to 2013, an affiliate of the Rashtra Swam Sevak Sangh from India. As a member of the Vistarak of the Hindu Swam Sevak Sangh, he contributed towards strengthening the bonds within the Hindu society in Suriname and the Hindu diaspora in the Netherlands and introduced various measures to help ensure practice of Hindu dharma. His political leadership is concentrated on the promotion and actual implementation of good governance based on the principles of Baldrige model on performance excellence, national planning, and the zoning of the whole territory of Suriname in a national structure plan. To date, he has received many awards and honors, and based on his contribution to the Surinamese community in general, including the Surinamese people of the Indian descent, he was awarded the highest national award by the President of Suriname, namely the award of the bearer of Grand Ribbon in the Honorary Order of the Yellow Star on June 5th, 2018. With these words, in describing his personality, may I take the privilege to request His Excellency for his much-awaited address, please. May I request the Vice Chancellor to kindly escort the Honorable Vice President, Dr. Michael Ashwin. Honorable Shri Ashok Kumar Mittal, Chancellor of the lovely Professional University, Shri Ramesh Mittal, Chairman of the lovely group, Shri Naresh Mittal, Vice Chairman of the lovely group, Mrs. Rashmi Mittal, Pro-Chancellor of the University, Dr. Rameshwar Singh Kanwar, Vice Chancellor of the University, ladies and gentlemen, students, sabhi ko sadar suprem namaskar. Let me at the outset express my sincere gratitude for your invitation to address this august body and I feel privileged and honored to have the opportunity to exchange views on an issue that I as a child of the Indian diaspora of Bharat Bhumi will put before you. It is indeed an honor and privilege for me to address this august forum in this beautiful city of Jalandhar of the state of Punjab. And the lovely university, my congratulations also, a beautiful campus, prestige, and very driven students. Allow me to express at the outset the warm greetings from Suriname, especially from the many thousands East Indian descendants in Suriname whose forefathers were brought as sugarcane workers some 146 years ago from former British India to work as indentured laborers at the Dutch colonial sugar plantations in Suriname with a few to successfully replace the African slave workers after the abolition of slavery in the West Indies. Our presence here today, esteemed Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, is witness of the fact that we as Indian diaspora are proud of our cultural roots of, from Bharat and stand ready to use all available opportunities to strengthen our existing cultural and economic ties with this great nation and world power, the Republic of India. We feel obliged to maintain and preserve the rich cultural heritage of our forefathers and will continue to do so in the future. My beautiful country, Suriname, the country where I reside, is located on the northeast Atlantic coast of South America. Suriname is a multi-ethnic, 
multicultural and multi-religious community which has proven to live in peaceful coexistence since our independence from the Dutch colonial power in 1975. The three major ethnic and cultural groups are East Indians, Af afro surinamese and Japanese, of which the East Indians, better known as Hindustani, people from Hindustan, represent 30% of the total population. Suriname is a tropical country, tropical, we are rich in natural resources such as gold, bauxite and crude oil while 93% of the total land area is covered by tropical rainforest and is a country, is the country with the highest percentage rainforest in the whole world. And with the arable land included this amount to a total area of 163.8 square kilometers almost as large as your beautiful state of Karnataka or as large as the state of Gujarat but having only a total population of around 600,000 people. Suitable for rice and palm oil cultivation as well as wood processing and much much more, Suriname is named within the 20th richest countries in the world based on the abundance of natural resources that still has to be developed. The indentured laborers from Bitter India were brought to Suriname during the period of 1873 to 1916. In their new homeland, they did not forget their cultural heritage. They brought with them brought both material and immaterial cultural items such as tools and utensils, music instruments, dress, Indian plants, seeds such as baigan, what we call Bhata and Suriname, Kailaila, Nenwa, Taroi, Mangoes, Am, Jamun and other plants. They also brought the Ayurvedic knowledge on the medicinal plants, yoga, Indian philosophy and the Indian way of life and last but not least, their way of life, the Hindu Dharma and Islam. They brought their languages as well, such as Hindi, Urdu, Bhojpuri, Audhi, Maithali and Braj Bhasha. In order to communicate with each other, they created a new language known as Sarnami Hindustani or Sarnami, which is a mix of these languages. They also assumed a new identity as Hindustani because of their connection and cultural affinity with their country of origin and the land of their ancestors, Hindustan. Suriname is within the broad Caribbean, probably only country that has maintained the Hindi language as a living language. The laborers were recruited in the district of Uttar Pradesh at that time and Bihar from where they made a journey of three months across the Indian and Atlantic Ocean to Suriname. Four religious, four religious events and festivals from Hindu and Muslim communities have been officially earmarked as national holidays in Suriname. These are Pagwa, we call Holi, Diwali, Idul Fitr and Idul Adha. Nowadays, Surinamese and Hindustanis have acquired key positions in all sectors of society, including parliament and executive power and government. As is well known, in the past history, the colonial powers have mobilized both slaves from Africa and indentured laborers from Asia, in particular from India, Indonesia and China, to work at the plantations in South America, Suriname, and also the Caribbean. The only possessions which they could carry with them was their cultural heritage. As in most countries in that region of South America and the Caribbean, one of the major challenges has been how to prevent cultural clashes and ethnic confrontations and or cultural domination of one group over the other between the various ethnic groups brought from different countries to the colonies, for example, Africans, Indians, Chinese, Javanese, Jews, Portuguese, and Europeans, including the, Aramid, including the indigenous Amerindians, which were the original inhabitants of that region. As a reference, I may refer to the ethnic clashes in former colonies such as Fiji, Guyana, and Uganda. Brothers and sisters, pondering over 
policy and practice of four nation building in Suriname and application of Vedic thought. I had a unique chance to look at 20 years of work that I've done. What had started as an adventure and search, research at the local level <clears throat> unveiled itself as an issue of global importance. Already at a young age of 17, I started reading the Vedic scriptures. <clears throat> and at a certain time period in time, I developed a deep conviction inspired by the sea of knowledge as it can be described most fittingly. My first point of contact was with the fast knowledge and literature was the Bhagavad Gita, a very old copy, beginning of this century, by Pandit Satwa Lekar, published by Swadhyaya Mandal. Coming from a family of politicians and educators, I was very well aware of the history of our country, Suriname, and challenges it faced as a nation. Thus, the conviction that more and more deepened through the years was that our young nation, Suriname with its diverse cultures that migrated to our land in South America starting from thousands of years ago by the indigenous Amerindians and from the beginning of the previous millennium absorbing people from all over the world through slavery, indentured labor, also by free will with its dozen languages, I was convinced that this young nation can be guided towards nation building by the oldest scientific thoughts of mankind that can be found in the Vedic scriptures from the time of the Saptarishis to the times of the modern seers and scholars East and West. I realized pretty fast that my local dream was actually a struggle of every nation globally. Not surprising considering the principle in the ancient Sanskrit first yet Pinde Tat Brahmande in the same Vedic sea of knowledge explaining that all that is outside you is within you and your body is a minute universe meaning whatever is in the micro microcosm is also in the macrocosm that our small selves are simply a part of a universal consciousness Anu me vibhu kahte hain gagar me sagar and I found as a struggle and characteristic development back home in Suriname it has a global presence and a global relevance as well. By putting into practice and policy my aspiration for nation building through the inspiration and application of Hindu Vedic thought reaching from contributions from time immemorial to modern times from seers and scholars I had my share, own share of the adding to the process of nation building and contributing at the civil society level and at the policy level. As you will see in my listing that my historical moments, that many historical moments can be mentioned that strengthen the society and people of Suriname to live together as one nation and one people. Long ago, the great seers and savants of this land Bharatvarsh had delved deep into the vital questions of life, the ideal of huma humanity and the human unity and universal brotherhood of a world free from all traces of conflict and misery all this had stirred their hearts since time immemorial and a constant prayer through age to the ages had been Sarve Apu Sarve Api Sukhinaha Santu Sarve Niramayaha Let everyone be happy Let everyone be free from all ills Not the greatest good of the greatest number but total good of all beings had been their glorious ideal That's why it is my unflinching belief that we need a stronger and more influential India that has been a beacon of light from the centuries as the Vishwa Guru of the world and so many might now say in modern times with your own Prime Minister at the forefront Narendra Ji Modi in Dutch we say it's a part of our national anthem that says how we came together here in Suriname. My ongoing research during the last seven years based on a broader work over the past 21 years is referred to as action research. As Kurt Lewin, former professor of MIT, defined it, action research is a comparative research on the conditions and effects of various forms of social action and research leading to social action. 
that uses a spiral, uh, spiral of steps, each of which is composed of a circle of planning, action, and fact-finding about the result of the action. The choice for this approach, for me, of action research, becomes very clear when considering the theme that is policy and practice for nation building in Suriname and the application of Vedic thought. This action research revolves around my passion for communicating the Vedic scriptures and the love for my own country as a young nation working towards nation building and the struggle for decolonizing the minds of our people. Much East and West have been done to describe a nation and the process of nation building. So in the research process that I've been through, the selected focus of theories that are clarified are drawn from the work already done on the characteristics of nation and nation building from the late Pandit Deen Dayal Upadhyay and Sri Vishwanath Limaye and other sources of literature put forward in our Vedic thoughts. A summary of those thoughts I give you now for better understanding. That when a group of people, group of people, live with a higher goal and ideal <coughs> or mission and look upon a piece of land as their motherland, <coughs> the group constitutes a nation. The coming up of a nation is its long and self-evolving process. The universal's law, the universal's law dictate the birth, growth, and revival or deterioration or fall of different nations. Accordingly, every nation has a mission to fulfill. <clears throat> it is a living unit through ages of slow and silent fusion of noble human interests, national society comes up, developing side by side <clears throat> with its history, geography, language, literature, do's and don'ts, ideals to live for and die for on a cooperative basis with mutual understanding following the principles of interdependence, not to serve selfish interests, but elevating each other to his or her noble self and leading the smallest unit, the man, to bigger and bigger units tending to godhood. The nation also takes birth as a man. Such thus society is a living organism as described in the Purusukta. Sahastra Shirsha Purushaha, Sahastra, Sahastra Raksha, Sahastra Pad. The society, the society is the Virat Purush, having thousands of heads, thousands of eyes, thousands, thousands of legs. The support of this thought is also found in some Western modern thinkers like Hirka and Fouye. The society is for the research purpose of, and premise taken as an entity with its own self. Naturally, like the individual, it has also got a body, mind, intellect, as well as a soul. To be more specific, the people for the society is the body, distinct social mind, an intellect, the discriminating force, the buddhi, that is the enacted by, that is enacted by the constitution and the soul of the society is the Atman. Adopting as the model of the Ekad Mano Darshan, integral humanism theory, called the integrated cube representing man and society, and the selected focus my action research through the years has evolved much around the aforementioned. Also, that different social political institutions have to be based in the aforementioned cooperative basis and integrated basis. And the underlying principle that sustains man, institutions, the society, and even the universe, that principle is dharma, which is followed by man to lead moksha, but socially can lead what we call a once free state. The laboratory of my research has been the fields, have been the fields of civil society. I built upon my experiences from 21 years and politics and policy making in the past seven years. Also, the process of decolonization is very important and has also been a part of my study. In this process of my research, I have practiced and I found that the geopolitical sphere, there is a dire need 
for the way we look at the world of our global challenges, the change in perspective and proposals I have done on many platforms worldwide, I briefly touched upon here. The heritage and conviction from the times of the rishis, sages and munis, the thinkers, till our modern era of Swami Vivekananda has always been the missionary of Pyag, renunciation and seva, service on every journey, spreading all over the world. <clears throat> the need of peace and harmony in the world today is a fact. But as George Lakoff, the distinguished professor of cognitive science and linguistics says, facts matters enormously. <clears throat> but be, to be meaningful, they must be framed in terms of their moral importance. A, world, a frame or worldview is simply the way we think the world works and how we fit into it. Everyone has a worldview, though most people are not aware of it. Understanding these worldviews is vitally important because they shape our thoughts, attitudes and actions. That's why we sometimes lack the persuasive communication when propagating peace and ethics through slogans and speeches. In people's existing frames and worldviews, like spirituality, words like spirituality, peace, harmony and ethics do not necessarily ignite and do not evoke the necessary imagination, acceptance and rise towards action. Thus we need to put forth right ideas and also frame in terms of their moral importance, which will invoke the right imaginations and views also continuously bringing these ideas and perspectives into public discourse and debate time and again so that spiritual frames get eventually established in the minds of all people. Once this acceptance and establishment is there, present words such as peace harmony will do the work by themselves and persuasively. You can imagine then the effect of the right ideas with a complementary frame of moral importance and on going forward integrating them in economic policies, education systems, through your media networks and so on. I put forth four, only four, concepts out of our rich Hindu heritage. These can set in motion the right moral perspective and thus may serve as the seeds of shaping of spiritual frames and mind, sprains frames of mind. The first concept it's a concept of renunciation and service. <clears throat> the twin ideal as Swami Vivekanand names them. It is renunciation of this trivial organic centered ego and manifestation of our larger spiritual self that makes for one's life expression in the mood and act of service. And it gets nourished in turn by that mood of act and act of service. As the great Swami continues, intensifying efforts in those channels, the rest will take care of itself. This idea with a spiritual worldview, as a spiritual worldview, is a worldview and a frame par excellence, ignites the right moral perspective and worldview. The second concept is that we should rise above our lower nature. Like we say in the Shastras, Ahara Nidra Bhaya Maithunancha Chasamani Metat Pashur Bhinanaanam धर्मों the universal problem on individual personalities nowadays can be summed up in a question, in one question. Why does man lack empathy and psychology? Because man is always busy with himself and blinded by the veil of their lower nature that prevents them to see what plays in the heads and the hearts of others. Only those who master the lower nature and enable themselves to lose their self-interest can really know and understand the other. The mindset and this mere mindset and this mere idea will already have solved most of our problems today on different levels. 
the third concept the concept of dharma is always and forever twofold the immemorial and universal concept of dharma is defined as the internal and universal law or lawfulness that which sustains the universe sustains society dharana dharma ityahu dharmo dharyate praja praja ko dharan karne wale dharma is defined as and this that which sustains society and is it is in its all round self the scholarly work in the vaisheshik sutra defines the concept of dharma to be twofold on those lines it says yato abhyudaya nishreya satya siddhi sa dharma translated by adi shankar acharya as that which fetches prosperity in this world and leads to absolute reality successfully is dharma this twofold dharma is verily the means of the true abhyudaya also known as pravritti social economic welfare and nishreya also known as nimritti spiritual growth and liberation of all beings dharma is always twofold and neglect neither neglects the welfare of the physical world nor that of the spiritual growth thus achieves welfare of both the worlds the construction establishment of this second frame of third frame of mind based on the concept of dharma is eminent to regain balance in this world the fourth concept is referred to as not mixing up the state with the nation countries worldwide are becoming necessarily diverse through migrations among others and face new realities every day with consequently many challenges in the relation between state and nation we have been for too long made to think that the nation <clears throat> or to say the national society is a political concept which may give some importance to economic and so on while in fact it is basically a cultural concept because as the seer shri dindayal upadhyay says society is a living entity referred in the gita as loka sangraha not merely a combination of individuals only by accepting that the nation and accepting the nation as a living organism and a cultural concept and having this frame of mind we can preserve the fast diversity in cultures and traditions in the world that a so national society although diverse in many ways can still evolve as one nation on a cooperative basis with mutual understanding and following the principles of interdependence not serving selfish interests but elevating each other such a frame of mind would also guide political leaders as such much is needed on change much change is needed in this world but we hindus from the descent of the vedic scriptures have our convictions that drive us towards action in a way that swami vivekanand says and others uthisht jagrata prapyan varani bodata arise awake and do not stop till the goal is reached dhanyawad yes